Okay, so we're going to review Uncle Roger's review of Nigella Lawson. So pretty, but can she make ramen? Now, I'm just going to share a short little story before we get into this. When I was 16, I got my first job as a dishwasher. And we only had a TV with an antenna, one of those rotary antennas where you turn the dial so that way you can uh, get your local stations in more clear. So after I started getting a couple paychecks, I bought the family cable. My grandparents, I was raised by my grandparents, they didn't really care to have cable, so it was really more for me. But I started watching the Food Network a lot, and I fell in love with Nigella Lawson that summer. So it's going to be interesting to see what Uncle Roger has to say about her. Yes, another British chef making Asian food. Uncle Roger going to review Nigella Lawson making ramen. I'm in no mood for that noise and chaos of a noodle bar, so I make my own. Oh my god, her face and kitchen so pretty. Nigella Lawson is MILF mother <laughs> I like to fry rice for. But can she make... <laughs> oh, I can already tell he's going to be a little bit risque in this video. This is probably going to be as much of a reaction to him as it is to her. Rolled in no uncertain. Hi, uh, just that wee joke. And I already see it BBC. And also, why she hang all the colander from the ceiling? Hi, uh, Nigella. You millionaire woman, but you can't afford one drawer. Hi, Terms. <laughs> About our last house, we had a rack over the, over the uh, peninsula over the sink. I like to hang our copper pots. We had stainless pans that are copper lined. I did a review on them in a different video. Um, I like to hang them up there when we used to be able to do that. That no Japanese person would ever make ramen at home. The thing is, when I need the cosseting that only a bowl of ramen can give, I'm in no mood for that noise and chaos of a noodle bar. Uncle Roger have to admit, this is the most beautiful kitchen i seen. This kitchen too sexy. This not atmosphere for making food. This atmosphere for making babies. <laughs> I Christmas light, you need to make ramen. So I make my own. And I start with the Japanese broth, dashi. Dashi, okay, correct, good stuff. But this camera guy, I think he know what he doing. Yes, of course it a he. Why showing us this angle? I think all my nephew third leg standing up now. Hi, yeah. Pay attention to food, not to the two other thing. Niece and nephew, don't be dirty. Uncle Roger watching this video because I like ramen, not for any other reason. And what goes in is all important. Dried shiitake mushrooms already sliced. See that angle again? Roger, I think they're just trying to get a good angle on the pot. And we are firmly back in the universe of umami now. And some ginger, a lot of ginger. Some might say an excessive amount of ginger, but I can never have too much of its spicy warmth. Okay, I like that she don't even measure. She just use feeling. Or as chef once say, she just throw. She just throw. But why this motion at the end? I think this just for camera. When Uncle Roger say use finger, that's not what I mean. Hopper chef, super busy in restaurant. No time for elegant fingering. So I don't soak the dried mushrooms because I do it as I cook. This needs to come to a boil, but first it'll stir and I can't... I should be ashamed to admit, eat with chopsticks, but I can stir with one. I can't eat with chopsticks either. Of course you can't eat with chopsticks. You're supposed to use two of them. Hi, uh, <laughs> I think Nigella don't know how chopsticks work. Who stir with one chopstick? So weird. That like wearing only one shoe. Nigella, why don't you give Uncle Roger your phone number and address? I send you my chopstick for free. Ex-wife Auntie Helen, gone for good, so Uncle Roger available. And just about the one thing I remember from physics at school, thank you Mr. Clark, is that if you put a lid on, everything comes to the boil faster. Because you trap the heat in. If that the only thing you remember from physics, then Mr. Clark fucked up. Please <laughs> and nephew, don't go to that school. And it boils 
And you can see the mushrooms are beginning to plump up, but they're going to plump up even more and lose their flavour into the broth. So Wait, what? What? Replay? They're going to plump up even more and lose their flavour into the broth. You only put mushroom in broth for two minutes and you think it's going to flavour the broth high. That's not enough time. What reality you live in? The well, Roger, if the pot's already coming to a boil, it's probably been in there for eight to ten minutes. And she said she was going to leave them in there the entire time she was uh, cooking. When you use dried mushrooms, uh, sometimes the bags will say, like, you know, soak overnight or something, and uh, or soak for five hours. The different brands will have different times on them. And the water itself gets a lot of mushroom flavor just leached out of the mushrooms, and the water can turn... Uh, we've used dried porcinis at the restaurant, and the water's turned like a, a dark brown, almost like a coffee brown when I left them overnight the one time. So that water does inherently have a lot of leached out flavor. Um, if she's got those boiled in there, like if the water's starting to simmer, it's been on for at least 10 minutes. Mushroom just met the broth. They don't even have time to befriend yet. Where the flavor? You need an hour at least. Lid on so everything stays trapped in the pan. This is baby pak choy, but... Why are her knife so small? Any leafy greens like this would do. Asian cooking, we love using big knife. It's faster. Your knife so small, by the time you finish cutting, there will be COVID-20. I mean, I don't want to defend, like, get in here on a knife battle or anything, but... You know, like, my wife loves to use a little paring knife, or at least she did, you know, before I started getting on her about using bigger knives, right knife for the right job. But a lot of people cooking at home that are just getting into it will try to use paring knives or steak knives or, you know, utility knives for literally everything because a big chef knife just intimidates them. But I make it like this because the first time I ever cooked it, I came back home one evening. I came back home one evening. I came back home one evening. Angela is saying to all the nephew out there, don't think dirty, or else this is oh what God. I'm gonna do to your third leg. <laughs> I came back home one evening, so ravenous, and just opened the fridge and opened my cupboards, and this is what I had. Her fridge only has bok choy. Hi. I am all about the radishes these days. Always have them in the fridge. Food of the gods. Food of God? No, no. Food of the God is MSG. <laughs> God don't like radish. God like magic white powder. No, f food of the God is cheeseburgers. And I have a feeling there's a cocaine joke coming up. I hear Nigella like the magic white powder. <laughs> <laughs> yep, cocaine joke. <laughs> I am all about the radishes these days. Food of the gods. Radish is food of rabbit. Not food of God. If radish is food of God, Uncle Roger rather go to hell. And now into this delicate but deep broth goes. Not deep, no flavour. Of the baby pat choy along with the peppery juiciness of the radishes. This woman really likes her radish. Is she lobbyist for big radish? Usually for ramen, the topping and broth you mix separately because if bok choy in broth too long, it becomes soggy and gross. Also, nobody really put radish in ramen. Hiya. And now a final flurry of flavorings to augment what's already in the pan. A husky hit of miso. A husky hit of miso. Uncle Roger like watching this video. Because I'm learning so many new English words. Who knew husky hit just meant tablespoon? This woman English so good. Uncle Roger gonna call it my microwave from now on. Milk, full fat, which I've warmed in the microwave. A dash of soy. Um, I had a British, two British teachers in chef school. And my one British teacher would, instead of saying aluminum, would always say, get the aluminium foil. I feel like they enunciate certain consonants harder than others. So when I'd be driving home from, from college, it was like an hour and a half drive home. 
and I'd start to fall asleep in the car, I'd start going, Aluminium! Aluminium! And I'd just start screaming it to myself in my car the, about five, ten minutes, wake me right up. Oh, that not enough. And the mirror's drop of toasted sesame oil. No, don't, don't put mirror's drop higher. You small, you small, so stingy, this woman. Is she trying to save money? Also, she has her own crazy measurement system. A husky hit a dash and the mirror's drop higher. Just say use feeling. She described her cooking like she writing poem. Is she chef or is she English teacher? And the leaves of the baby pet choy go in. And another stir. One chopstick again. The leaves need the mirrors wilting and miso mustn't be boiled. Miso cannot boil, she correct. But this not right way to make flavouring for your ramen soup. Japanese people, they call this soup flavouring tare. Tare is the most important element in ramen. Ramen without tare is like Uncle Roger without orange polo. Or like Jamie Oliver without chilli jam. If you whoa, whoa, whoa. We made it eight minutes in before his first Jamie Oliver burn. I don't know if he's starting to let off on Jamie. The ramen don't have tare, you fucked up. But tare not made like this. You make the miso tare separately and then put in bowl at the end. Stirring in miso paste is not making proper tare. Hiya, Nigella, just use MSG. Don't bother with your half ass miso flavoring. MSG make everything better, including your shit ramen skill. My ramen requires two more elements. First, an egg. Hmm. Egg too white. You need to marinate. Second, noodles. I mean, I, I cooked these before. Noodle! Usually ramen noodle, yellow in color. Why this noodle so white? Kinda sus. I think it's not ramen noodle. But it doesn't matter that they're cold because the heat of the broth will warm them. I could eat this just as it is, but I. I feel it incumbent upon me to arrange it in a calming Japanese order. Where got calming? Where got calming? This bowl of noodles stressing Uncle Roger out. Arrange it in a calming Japanese order. You call this arranging? You're not arranging, you're just poking. Uncle Roger never say, I'm gonna arrange my table and then go. All that remains for me to do is... Okay, it yolk a bit runny, it perfect, I give her that. Sprinkle over the green parts of a spring onion. Spring onion, good, good. And yeah, a lot of British chefs on the BBC, instead of using the spring onions, you'll see them throwing parsley, which really irritates Uncle Roger. A little bit of dried chilli. Dry chili! Hmm. Uncle Roger would prefer using dry chili to make your tare instead of sprinkling at end. More flavor. And I don't want to puncture the mood of cozy serenity, but I do have a comedy contraption with which to eat my ramen. Is she using spock? Spock for ramen! Hiya! Maybe that's why Nigella don't go to noodle bar anymore. She banned from all of them because she bring her own spot there. Fork for the noodles, spoon for the broth. Or let's just cut out the middle now. <sighs> ramen has five components. Soup, tare, noodle, topping and oil. Soup, she used dashi. Okay, tare don't exist. You can't just put miso in and call it tare. Noodle, it looked like she used wrong type of noodle. Topping, egg and spring onion. Okay, oil. Yeah, it kind of looks like she used like an instant noodle. Like here we have um, Mr. Noodles and it's a white noodle with, um, you put it in the, in the pot and then you add the little package of beef or chicken vegetable uh, flavor and you get just the, you know, just the noodles, the instant noodles. I think that's what it looks like she used. She only used two mm. drops of sesame oil. Hi, yeah. Yeah, there is almost no point of her using that oil.
not enough. So she only get two out of five component right high. Yeah. At least this ramen somewhat homemade. She didn't just use instant ramen and put topping on there. So still better than Jamie Oliver and his packet rice. Nigella, Uncle Roger single now. Hopefully one day I can make egg fried rice for you. Come get husky hit of Uncle Roger. So he never dropped his knee down either, so he wasn't that upset with anything she did. I think it's a pretty good homemade ramen for somebody that doesn't know how to make ramen. If you did, if you made one of those videos of like, one day of making ramen, one week of making ramen, one month of making ramen, one year of making ramen, I think this video would probably fall somewhere in between the one week and the one month. Sorry, Papa Chef Super. So that was my reaction of Uncle Roger's re reaction to Nigella Lawson making ramen. There wasn't too much wrong with it, and I'm sure it'd be fine. Anyways, come back next week and watch me react to something else.